everyone, Sue here, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to try and recreate a 1970s buffet party spread. It's in honour of my brother who has come back from America and he's been having a bit of nostalgia walking around the streets that we used to frequent as children. And this theme was also inspired by Atomic Shrimp's cheese football video. We got together and thought about a few of the things that we used to enjoy and I'm going to be making some of them today. And the first one I'm making is a curried rice with mandarins and cucumber. So what you'll need is four portions of rice that can either be long grain or basmati, some cucumber, I'll probably use about half of it in this, maybe less. We used to use tinned mandarins, but I can't get any of those, but I've got these in fruit juice in plastic containers boo plastic and I've also got some salad cream which is one of the main flavors along with you can use curry powder but I've got um, some garam masala and some mild chili powder and they'll be great in this so the first thing to do is to boil the rice not until it's too soggy but just until it's not got that bite to it so I'm just going to put that in there and then I'm going to rinse it until the water comes clear and stick it in the microwave for about 12 minutes. Once you've boiled your rice, it's important to give it a good rinse with some very cold water to make sure that you take all the heat out straight away and then leave it to drain for a few minutes. Hmm, bangs in the background. Parts of the house are literally being demolished, so please ignore that. While it's draining, I'm going to cube my cucumber. If you leave the skin on, you get the green colour coming through and it makes a much more vibrant look to the dish. Let's hope it doesn't slip and slide everywhere. The one major scar that I gave myself on my hand was through cutting cucumber. So I always try to be careful now. those chunks in and the reason for making sure that the rice is drained well is because the ingredients that you're putting in they're actually quite watery and wet so you don't want to add to that moisture and I've also drained my mandarins off so they're going to go in as well I used three of those little containers. In my Christmas cracker, I got a lovely set of measuring spoons. So why not use them? I usually go for things like mini screwdrivers, but I thought, oh, these will be fine. So I'm going to put about a tablespoon of garam masala in there. Just to start off with, because you should really adjust this to taste. I'll start with half a teaspoon of mild chilli powder. I don't want to make it too strong because we've got varying tastes coming to the 1970s buffet. And of course, in the 1970s, Curries weren't really particularly strong in the UK, so it was very much an acquired taste. The rice seems to have drained off pretty well now, so I'm going to add that to my bowl, and then everything gets a good mix. Before it's completely mixed in, I'm going to add some salad cream. Now make sure this is real salad cream and not mayonnaise, because Mayonnaise will give it completely the wrong flavour. Start with a few dollops. You don't want to make it too wet. Just mix that in gently. It has to coat all the rice. And this is a wonderful dish. I used to make it for my own parties back in the 1980s and it was a great hangover recipe actually. The smell of the 
curried rice is just bringing it all back actually it doesn't matter if the mandarins break up a little bit in the rice when you're stirring them because it all adds to the amalgamation of the flavors now i'm just going to take a small taste and just see whether i've got what i want yes that's lovely in the 70s we didn't really have the range of exotic vegetables that we get now in the supermarkets so there were just some very basic ones that you could use and i've cut some raw carrots up into batons for crudités and i'm also going to use some celery in a couple of different ways the first way which was really fun was to cut the celery and make some celery flowers just by slicing down the celery into thin slices I should do it that way really because otherwise I'll end up doing my fingers in again so you've got your slices of celery there and then you plunge them into cold water and they should make some flowers after a while put those to one side and then the other thing that I'm going to do which I absolutely used to love was the celery piped with Primula cream cheese <laughs> so I'm going to do that one I'm just going to make sure that my celery is completely dry otherwise the cream cheese will slide off so I'll just get a kitchen towel and make sure that everything's dry inside just pipe it into the centre like that and that was it. I think this Primula cheese is actually a little less stiff than the original one. It seems to not make that pretty pattern that you used to get. And it is cold. I'll put those back in the fridge before it melts over everything. And the other thing that we used to have was volivants. Now, I forgot to get some puff pastry, but I had a little bit left over from my Christmas lattice. So I made three little volivants. And I'm just going to pipe those with some cream cheese as well. Everyone in the family does love a sherry trifle. Now, I've made one of those before. This one isn't going to be a vegan one, but have a look at my vegan recipe if you want to see how I put one together. I'm just going to break up my sponge fingers and soak them in sherry for a bit. It's a good job that I didn't drink my Christmas sherry. I don't know why I didn't, but I just didn't drink as much this year. Right, that's probably enough fingers, so I'm just going to soak that in sherry. Give it a good old glug. How about that then? I quite like it if there's just a little bit of sherry juice hanging around the bottom. Sherry juice. I say sherry juice, I mean sherry. Now I'm going to drain my fruit and add those in a layer on top of the sponge fingers. I've got mango and pineapple and papaya and I've added the last pot of the mandarins as well. And I've also got some blueberries here and now I'm going to put the layer of custard on top. Just give that a spread out. And now I'm just going to whip my double cream and pop that in on top as well. Just 
think of a few hundreds and thousands and unicorns, unicorns on top and make it look really overdone in 1970s. There, that'll do. I've got Mum's old 1970s Tupperware Party Susan here and I'm going to start filling that. And one of the main things that we filled that with was with things on sticks. So I'm going to do some things on sticks. I've already cubed my cheddar. I've used mild cheddar because once you start getting into using mature cheddar, it gets a bit too crumbly and you don't get those lovely cubed pieces. I've got some pineapple here and that goes really nicely with the cheese. And now I have some little pickled onions. They have to be the sweet onions that go on top of the cheese. A big favourite was sausages on sticks. And I've got some pork cocktail sausages. Designated non-vegetarian zone. So that's my party Susan filled up and I've just got a few other bits and pieces to put out. The last thing that we did was to make some flowers with tomatoes. And these are particularly huge tomatoes. I don't remember having anything quite as big in the 1970s. But I'm just going to make a flower tomato to show you exactly what we did. It was just a case of cutting zigzags in at the halfway point and through to the centre of the tomato. And it is best to use a serrated pointed knife for this procedure. Now if you were really fancy you'd be putting a stuffing inside of these because they're quite big and they could be scooped out. And all you do is twist and voila you have your tomato flowers. We didn't have spreadable butter in those days so we've got real hard butter. So here's my spread for the buffet. I've got French baguettes and my rice and my party Susan with lots of things on sticks, some twiglets, baby bells, some crisps here, my flour tomatoes and some salad cream. And who could forget the Matthias Rosé that we used to have. So <laughs> I hope everybody's going to enjoy it. Cheers to your journey. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Oh yeah, seventies wine. <laughs> Classic. Oh yeah. Oh very, my goodness. Very bubblegummy. Mm -hmm. The original rosé. We thought it was lovely. Well, this is very nostalgic. So. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> What's yeah, the only thing you're missing is some Demis Roussos music. Oh, Demis Roussos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I've got some cheese footballs. Have you? Yeah. Have you? Have you? Oh, you've been holding out on us. Yeah, I think I've got have some. Have you? I think I've got oh. some. Oh. Fill one up and pass it round. You didn't get to say how much you wanted. You just ate what arrived in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think overall that was pretty successful, except for this, the Primula cheese. I mean, what's the point of putting a flower-shaped nozzle in there? if the cheese doesn't actually hold its shape. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching my little retro party and let me know in the comments if there are any foods that you used to like. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.